Salway, Sergeant Sausages, reporting for duty. I'm, I'm here to guard the prisoner. The prisoner, you know, Paul. Yeah, he's, he's under house arrest in this building behind me. I've got to keep a close eye on him to make sure he doesn't run off somewhere. We brought him the whole way here to Rome from Jerusalem. And after all we've been through, we certainly don't want them to escape now, do we? Tell you what, though, this Paul, he's a bit of a strange man. Everywhere we go, he goes on and on and on about Jesus. I mean, clearly he doesn't know what's good for him. It was because he was talking about Jesus that he got arrested in the first place. I mean, you'd, you'd think that he'd have learnt his lesson, but no. Every place we stopped on the way here, it was Jesus this and Jesus that. He still hasn't stopped now that we've arrived. Will you hear this? Yesterday, he had all the Jewish leaders round to the house and he talked to them about Jesus. I mean, what was he thinking? It was the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem that had him arrested for talking about Jesus. And now he's talking about Jesus to Jewish leaders in Rome. Seems mad if you ask me. I mean, what's so important about this message that he has to try and tell every single person he meets? Even if it gets him into massive trouble. I mean, it might get him thrown into prison. It might get him killed. It was even worse than that, actually. He didn't just tell these Jewish leaders about Jesus. He tried to persuade them that Jesus was God from their own scriptures. These are the Jewish leaders, for goodness sake. They're the world experts in scriptures. And Paul was telling them that they completely missed the point and that the scriptures are actually all about Jesus. Well, let me tell you, they were pretty annoyed. Well, most of them were. Surprisingly, some of them actually seemed to believe Paul. By the end, they were all arguing amongst themselves so much that I just had to kick them all out. Right, so I better go and check on Paul, see what he's up to. Though, I can probably guess. Probably telling more people about Jesus. Honestly, it's never ending with this guy. Anyway, Salway. We're going to sing a song about Jesus, the King of Kings, who takes away our sin. What sort of king goes up to a cross to suffer pain, to suffer to Sunday Stories for Families. We've been working our way through a book of the Bible called Acts for 18 weeks. And this week, we've made it to the very last chapter. That means after today, if you've joined us every week, you'll know all about a whole book of the Bible. Isn't that amazing? It's been an amazing journey. The book of Acts start with, starts with Jesus ascending into heaven and sending his Holy Spirit. There are just a few Christians in Jerusalem, but by the end of the book, there are Christians all over Europe Asia and North Africa. The good news about Jesus has been spreading and spreading. God's messengers, the apostles, have been taking God's message about Jesus to all sorts of different places. And we've been especially following one of those messengers. Can you remember his name? His name is Paul. And as we come to this last chapter of the book, Paul's been arrested for talking about Jesus and he's been taken to Rome to see Caesar, the emperor, and we saw last week how he had a really difficult journey on a boat in a storm. 
even being shipwrecked on an island. But now, in chapter 28, he's finally made it to Rome. He's still under arrest, but he's not in prison. They allow him to live in a house, but he has a guard who's always there watching him to make sure that he doesn't run off. So Paul's in Rome, and he's waiting to see the emperor, who's, who's going to decide whether to keep him in prison or let him go. But while he's waiting, he calls together a meeting of all the Jewish leaders in Rome. Now, do you remember? It was the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem who had arrested Paul in the first place. But the Jewish leaders in Rome come to meet with Paul, and let's see what he says. I'm going to read from Acts chapter 28, verses 23 to 31. Paul and the Jews chose a day for a meeting. On that day, many more of the Jews met with Paul at the place he was staying. Paul spoke to them all day long, explaining the kingdom of God to them. He tried to persuade them to believe these things about Jesus. He used the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets to do this. Some of the Jews believed what Paul said, but others did not. So they argued, and the Jews were ready to leave. But Paul said one more thing to them. He said, The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your fathers through Isaiah the prophet. He said, Go to this people and say, You will listen and listen, but you will not understand. You will look and look, but you will not learn. For these people have become stubborn. They don't hear with their ears, and they've closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might really understand what they see with their eyes and hear with their ears. They might really understand in their minds. If they did this, they would come back to me and be forgiven. I want you Jews to know that God has also sent his salvation to the non-Jewish people. They will listen. Paul stayed two full years in his own rented house. He welcomed all people who came and visited him. He preached about the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. He was very bold and no one tried to stop him. So Paul's in Rome and he's just doing the same thing he's always been doing. He's telling people about Jesus. You might have noticed that lots of the stories we've looked at in Acts are actually pretty similar. That's because everywhere they go, the apostles do pretty much the same thing, don't they? They tell people about Jesus. And just like everywhere else, some people in Rome accept the message about Jesus and some people reject it. Now, there's a couple of very important things for us to learn from that. First of all, it shows us just how important this message about Jesus really is. Paul was travelling all around and thousands of people were listening to him. He could have talked about all sorts of things, but all he wanted to do was tell people this news about Jesus, that he died for our sins, that he rose defeating death, that he sends the Holy Spirit to those who trust in him, and that he's coming back again one day. That's such an important message that Paul wants to make sure absolutely everyone hears it. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we hear it and that we accept it. Lots of you are lucky to have grown up with parents who've always taught you about Jesus, so you've known this really important news ever since you were a baby. But now maybe some of you are getting to an age where you can decide whether to accept or reject this message for yourself. Just like these Jewish leaders in Rome, you've heard the good news about Jesus, so make sure you accept it. Trust in Jesus for yourself. Ask God to forgive you for your sins and commit to following him. That's the first thing. And the second thing we can learn is to spread the good news ourselves. Lots of our friends at school won't know this good news, but we can tell them. As we've seen in Acts, some will accept the message and some won't. But if people don't accept it, we shouldn't worry. That's exactly what the Bible says will happen. Paul quoted from Isaiah, and Isaiah said that some people will hear, but they won't understand. Some people will see, but they won't learn. Some people will reject this message about Jesus. But don't be discouraged by that. That doesn't mean that you haven't explained it well enough. Some people just won't get it. But keep going, because some people will accept the message, and they'll be completely transformed by it. They'll be able to know God and be loved by him, just like we are. So there's two things to learn. Number one, accept the message for yourself. And number two, spread the message to others. There's one more really cool thing in this passage that I want us to look at. Did you hear what Paul was trying to convince these Jewish leaders about Jesus using? What did he use? The passage says he used the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets. He's using the Bible to convince them about Jesus, and he's using the Old Testament. That might sound a bit strange to us, 
Wasn't the Old Testament written a long time before Jesus came to earth? How could the Old Testament convince people about Jesus? Well, did you know that Jesus said that the whole Old Testament was actually all about him? Every story or prophecy or law helps us understand Jesus better. That's why Paul was able to use the Old Testament to convince some of these Jewish people about Jesus. This is actually our last week in Acts. From, the, from next week, we're going to be looking at some Old Testament prophets ourselves. And as we do that, we're going to be learning about Jesus. Anytime you read something from the Old Testament, a great question to ask is, what does this teach me about Jesus? So that's the end of Acts. Paul's in Rome telling people about Jesus. And we don't know for sure what happens to Paul next. The Bible doesn't tell us. But we have seen how God has spread the good news about Jesus from just a few people in Jerusalem to thousands of people in lots of different parts of the world. And even though that's where the book of Acts ends, that's definitely not the end of the story. The good news kept spreading, and today there are millions and millions of Christians all over the world. Isn't God amazing? But there are even more people who still haven't heard. So we need to remember those two things. Number one, accept the message for yourself. And number two, spread the message to others. It's time now to engage with the passage yourselves. There are resources for families on the Synapse Church website and some questions to dig deeper into the passage in the video description below. Thank you so much for joining us for Sunday Stories for Families and we hope to see you all again next week. Bye bye.